Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Steve, and today I want to talk about a lens, a very unique lens, a character lens, as I call it, from Leica. It is the Leica 50 Noctilux 50 F12, and there's two versions. There's one that was made in 1966, and there's a reissue that not so long ago Leica came out with. Now, the original in 1966 is a very rare lens. It's hard to find. In fact, if you go on eBay, expect to pay between $40,000 and $70,000 for this lens made in 1960s. The new one comes in at just under eight grand, and Leica says it's pretty much a close replica of the original. And lucky me, I have been able to shoot both of these lenses. Now, I shot the original a long time ago. It was back in 2011. It was for about a half an hour. Uh, I was shooting with Seal on his tour, uh, and if you remember that, anybody watching, I used a Leica M9 and a 50 Noctilux F95 almost for that entire tour. I think I threw in a Summicron and a Summilux here and there, but it was mostly shot with the 50 Noctilux. I got an album cover out of it, uh, photos in the CD booklet, all using that Noctilux F95. So that was pretty cool, but one day when uh, I believe there was a day off, uh, Seal and I went into a store in Vienna and they had all kinds of vintage Leica gear. One of the items he picked up was the original 50 F12 Noctilux, but back in 11, 2011, that lens was anywhere between $10,000 and $12,000 used. And I thought, wow, that's crazy expensive for an old lens. Um, but today, look at the prices, it's, it's absolutely insane. So he was pretty smart to buy that lens back then. It's almost as if he knew it was going to continue to appreciate. And uh, I remember going back to the hotel and he let me put it on my M9 and I snapped a few images with it. I think I snapped about 10 or 12 images with it. I'll share a couple of them here. And the one thing I remember about that lens from 1966 was that it was way smaller than the F95 Noctilux, smaller than the F1 Noctilux, and it was a little bigger than something like a 50 Summilux. Um, but you were getting that Noctilux name and that Noctilux draw, that creamy, surreal bouquet, right? And at F12, it was a little soft, but overall it had one of the smoothest um, bouquet qualities I have experienced to date. And I always remember shooting that lens thinking it was quite nice, mainly due to its size, weight, and that ethereal looking quality, right? A great lens for portraits, especially if you don't want to see every line, wrinkle, and crevice, right? And, you know, I, I, modern lenses are great. Lenses that try to be perfect are great if you need detail and sharpness across the frame. But when it comes to character lenses, they throw all of that out the window. A character lens will have vignetting, it will be a little soft, it will have either really nice bokeh or crazy bokeh, right? Lenses like the Noct Nikkor 58mm f1.2, lenses like the Canon Dream Lens 50 f9.5, or how about the original Leica Noctilux f1. I don't lump in the f9.5 into those categories because the f9.5 version brings Noctilux or Sumilux like sharpness to the picture and it's a more of a corrected ethereal lens, right? So for, for this video, I'm talking about these character lenses. Now character lenses can help set your images apart from the crowd. In fact, I've been shooting this reissue of the 50 Noctilux F12 and posting a few samples here and there on my social media. I had a few of my friends email me who know nothing about Leica or the lenses and they were asking me, how did you take that picture? Why does it look like that? How can I get that look? Uh, can I buy that camera or lens? And I told them what it was and they all freaked out at the price uh, because the reissue lens is around $7,800. Now, that's a far cry from the 60,000 that the used ones are being listed for on eBay. I don't know if they're selling for that, but people are listing them for that. Um, so the reissue is kind of a steal of a deal if you look at it that way but it's still a lot more, or a few thousand more than something like a 50 Summilux F1.4, which is a gorgeous lens in of, of itself. But the Noctilux F1.2, the reissue, is very close to that original from the 60s. And it's unique, there's not a lens like it on Earth that can reproduce this look. Other lenses have looks like the Noct Nikkor and the Canon Dream lens, but they're different 
from the Noctilux look. Now the Noctilux, the modern day reissue, is the same design, same size, comes with a snap-on metal hood. It looks as vintage as you can guess. It looks like it came right from 1966. But with the new version, you're getting a warranty, you're getting the new box and all of that good stuff. So if I were to buy one, I would definitely buy the new one with the warranty and skip the 60,000. Those are for collectors, I believe, and people with a lot of dough. But this lens has something about it that's really, really cool. And while you could not use it as a daily driver at F1.2, because the look would get old really quick and you'd miss focus a lot, you step this lens down to f2.8, f4, and it's almost like a Leica 50 APO in performance and look. It still retains that smooth Noctilux bouquet of this version Noctilux, but the vignetting goes away, the picture sharpens up, it just looks a little snappier. So you could use this lens as a daily driver just by stopping it down to f2.8, f4. At f2, it still has a little bit of a dreamy look, and wide open, it's full on dream, cream, smooth, uh, ethereal, and a little bit of swirl. You'll see some photos here as I talk. These are all from the 50 F1 II on the Leica SL2S. Uh, these are mostly all shot at F1 II because that is where the beauty lies. That is where the magic lies. That is why one pays almost $8,000 for a lens like this. You're paying for that quality at F1 II. And a lot of people would say, why would I spend $8,000 or close to it on a lens that's going to give me soft results. Well, it's not really about soft results. It's about beauty. It's again, if you take a portrait with it and you're able to nail that focus, uh, you will have a very, very unique looking image. In fact, if I had a ton of disposable income and I wanted one M lens to buy for my SL2S, I would highly consider this lens. Now that's not going to happen for me, not because I don't want it, but because I can't afford that lens and I don't need it. It's not something I need. But if I was out there taking portraits or street portraits, or I just wanted something to add beauty to my images, this is a lens that would do it. And a character lens, like I said, helps set your images apart from the rest. Perfect to me is boring. Um, perfect lenses are everywhere. You can buy a perfect lens or almost perfect, fairly inexpensive because these days the camera software fixes these images in the camera so they look almost perfect when they come out. It's easy to get a lens that's sharp across the frame without vignetting that looks really nice and has smooth bokeh. Heck, the lens I'm shooting right now this video with a Sony FX3 with a Sony 20 F1.8. Inexpensive lens, but it does a great job, right? If you want character though, beautiful character, sadly these days it's going to cost you a lot of money. And that's this Leica Noctilux. Now this lens has been sold out forever and ever it seems. It's on back order. Very hard to get. Leica did release a silver version limited to 100 pieces. But get this, go on eBay and look for a silver one and see how much it's going to set you back. You will have your mind blown. You can find the black one on eBay for around 10, 11,000 and upcharge, but that's the whole supply and demand thing. Now this lens, as I said, it's like a Jekyll and Hyde. It's like a, a super power dual, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. It, it, it has two powers, beautiful, soft, ethereal, or sharper, crisper, and more modern looking, yet still retaining that smoothness. It's a very, very unique lens. It's built to a high standard. It looks like it just came off the assembly line in 1966. And uh, it, it's a lens that at first, I wasn't sure I was liking because I wasn't used to that look anymore. But after just a day or two with it, my heart fell for this lens. And I just imagined the possibilities of of going on a trip and using it to take some gorgeous, gorgeous images. This is not a landscape lens. It's more of a people lens, more of a beautiful nature kind of lens. It's one of the most unique lenses I have shot with. And sadly, when I sent it back, my heart a little fluttered a bit and I missed it. And I do miss it. It's a great lens, but it is expensive. So if you have the wallet to support it, if you have a desire for a character lens, you have a few to pick from that are very good for a Leica SL2S or a Sony uh, A7, A9 series camera. 
but this lens is uh, at the top of the heap for me. It has a history. It has a beauty. It's built to a high standard. You can buy it new with a warranty. It's just going to cost you some dough. So that was my look at the 50 Noctilux F12, the reissue, as well as talking a little bit about the original. Um, to me, between the both, the time I spent with that original many years ago, it's hard for me to say by memory, but they're very close. They felt the same. They look similar. They are both uh, have two spherical elements. And that's why Leica stopped producing it in the 60s. It cost too much to make with that double spherical element. So um, they didn't make it for that long, and that's why it's so rare, those old ones, and that's why they're so expensive. When you have something rare, the price just jacks up. But you can get that lens new, the Leica Noctilux reissue, just under eight grand. I believe B&H Photo is taking pre-orders. I'll put a link below if you're interested. And if you like this video, thumbs up and subscribe. I will have more lens reviews soon. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a Sigma telephoto. I think it's a 150 to 600 coming in L mount. I'm going to snap some photos of the deer around here and see what I can capture nature wise. And I also have a new DAC review in the hi fi realm coming soon. So I love you all. I thank you all. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.